facts. This, this is the glass ceiling. Glass ceiling. On hard facts. Hard facts. Four minutes past 4 p.m. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. If it's a Wednesday, you take a look at your wristwatch or your time on your phone and it's 4 p.m. You know where you got to be here where we talk about the different barriers standing in the way of women achieving equality. And today we're having a conversation that is an offshoot of the conversations we've had for the past few weeks. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about domestic duties and whether they belong to husbands, whether they belong to wives, whether they belong to both of them. First, we talked about Emerald Udeakaji of um, Ebony State, who was a special assistant to Governor David Umahi and how she had to resign to save her marriage. You remember her? I remember when we talked about it. That was early in January, around the time where... Um, Kamala Harris was being inaugurated as vice president. That's when we had that conversation. So we went from that conversation to the story of this man who shared a testimony on Twitter who said he used to believe that the domestic tasks were for his wife alone. He felt that his only job was to make money outside, bring it home. And mind you, his wife was also bringing money home from her business. So she was not just minding the home. She was also doing business. But that didn't matter to my guy. My guy said, you know, once she came home from her shop or her business, she had to face the housework. And if she didn't do everything right, if she didn't prepare the exact food he wanted, he would get angry with her. But anyway, he told us how eventually... His wife had a breakdown. He came home, found her slumped, so she had to be hospitalized. And even when she came home, she had to rest. So suddenly, he had to take over the domestic work. And according to him, he says he saw the light. And today, he and his wife share all the work. That's his story. And that story resonated with a lot of you. Many of you agreed that, look, if husband and wife are both working outside the home then they should also share the duties inside the home. It's not fair for one person to come from work and still have to do more work while the other person comes home and just relaxes, relaxes their nerves. Because that's what we concluded last week. We concluded that the homework is actually real work. But then I got this very interesting phone call last week. Very interesting call from Sunday. He said something to me that made me realize, you know what? We have to have a conversation about child care. Let me play that call for you. Listen to that call. And then let's talk about child care. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I say I ate my mommy's food. Not my daddy's food. Mm. But... I, I wore my daddy's clothes. Daddy paid for the rent and also make sure we have the accommodation. Mm. So, but I ate my mommy's food. Mm -hmm. And when I, my mommy got food, when I when I, I started, I started living my own, normally go for my mommy's food. Mm -hmm. And that her attachment continued to be there until she died. Mm. At old age, at 80. And because of what he was doing for me, I will buy only 10,000 and give to her to be drinking. Hmm. She will do that for my dad. So, the attachment for all this is the attachment the children and the employer have. For instance, when I started my own, I, I, I work in a finance house. I leave house early 4 o'clock back then. And I wouldn't have time for the children. So, where will I have time to do all those? Hmm. So, when my wife wanted to join, complain, and she said okay, that the house work too much for her, that she does this, she will do that, I said, take it if I do. Okay, do I leave the job? When will I have time? If I collapse, okay? And at the point, she doing her for business. Sometimes she will leave before me, and then the children will come back. Nobody will take care of them. They will hang to the door. So one day I called her, I said, come, you'll be looking for money. I'll be looking for money. 
when they will come house, I will not put the children. I say, God forbid. I say, God forbid. God will only forbid. Only if I leave the job or you leave the job. So the next day she stops and start taking care of the children. Now I'm free. Mm. She's free. So we are both taking care of the child, the children. But what I'm, I mean, the children that do uh, go on their own. Mm. So what I'm trying to say at that chat stage, it depends on the job force. I'm calling us, the mother and the wife, or the father and the uh, one woman, what they are doing, whichever one that is doing a job that is more challenging, the other ones are fit. But under normal situation, like the man somebody said naturally, it should be if the man should be doing the eighty percent mental work. Mental work in the sense that to build up the children's future, to think about their education, their house, their their accommodation the problem and other problems. Why would the woman do the twenty percent of the physical health? Then the mom we do 80% of the physical and 20% of the mental so that the, the, of the, the situation will move. We should not use what is happening in America to hear yeah, because the situation there is not palatable. Like, do you know the rate of divorce that is happening there? Even their children are not, not, not like they're using gun to shoot some people. Is it because it's happening there? It's not happening here. Even Boko Haram is happening there. Do you know one day that or one time like that that the child went to use God to start killing other people? Mm. So we shouldn't use their own as a yardstick. Our children are better trained than them. It's just because that place things are working. But when the mother, when the children begin to eat the mommy's food, like I ate my mommy's food, and the mommy begin to provide food for the children, things will work well. Chris in Abara. Thank you very much for your call. All right. That was last week. Um, I, I'm I'm choking because I was laughing. Sorry. Um, because he said something very contradictory. He said their children, uh, our children are better raised. It's just that there things are working better. If your children are better raised, won't your children have systems that work better? Just food for thought. It's just something you can think about. If if you have better raised children here, uh, wouldn't they create systems that work better? That work as well as those systems you admire abroad, that you want to run to abroad and live in abroad. But that's an aside. You know, that's just side commentary. The bigger topic, the larger topic, inspired by what uh, Chris said there, is who should be responsible for child care? Who should be responsible for child care? Because last week, a lot of you came and said, oh, when it's domestic chores, ah, if you share it though, a lot of you said, oh, stop seeing domestic work as women's work. Stop seeing the wife as the primary person responsible for domestic work. But what about child care? Do we also agree that child care should be shared? Should we also stop seeing the wife, the mother, as the primary caregiver? Should we start seeing the father and the mother as equally responsible for bringing up their children, equally responsible for feeding them, equally responsible for bathing them, equally responsible for clothing them, equally responsible for schoolwork, for managing their social life, all that work that goes into the day-to-day -day raising of a child. Should this be shared as well? Or is it the primary responsibility of one person? Should it still be put on the mother's shoulders alone? Should a working mother after a long day at the office, be the only one responsible for supervising the child care? Or should the father also take on the day-to-day? -day? You go to some homes and the father has no idea 
about the day-to-day child care matters. For example, he has no idea which of his son's clothes need to be washed in a particular way. He has no idea what food the child likes or doesn't like. He doesn't know what type of soap or body cream is best for his daughter's skin. Once the mother is not around, all hell breaks loose. You have women who can't travel because, ah, my husband, he can't take care of his children. His children, the same children that came out of his penis. Any matter that needs to be handled, he tells the children or the nanny to wait until the mother is around or call the mother on the phone. They don't know what medicine their children are allergic to. Have you ever traveled with a work colleague who is a mother? Like maybe a business trip for two or three days. Have you noticed how all the time she's getting calls from home or she's calling home? Has Kemi eating? Have you washed Olu's uniform? Chingera, have you finished your homework? It's almost as if now that she's gone, there's no other adult in the home, in the house. Meanwhile, there's a full-grown husband there, head of the house. Now, compare that with your colleague who is a father. Does he have to make those types of calls? I don't know. You tell me when you call me. In my experience, no, he doesn't. But maybe you have a different experience. Now, we're going to talk about the effect that that has on careers. We'll come back to that. But let's stop here. Let me take your calls. 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. Who should be responsible for child care? Who should be responsible for child care? We've got Femi up as our first caller. I'm curious what Femi in Mushing has to say. Hello, Femi. Thank you for calling us. Yeah. Hi, Femi. Welcome. Go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, I was listening to what you were saying concerning mm-hmm. we should be responsible for uh, the child of what you do. Mm-hmm. I have a daughter. Okay. Presently, right now, she's just 10 months. Okay. Sometimes I beat her when the mother is tired. In fact, sometimes. I notice when the mother is tired. I believe it's just an understanding between the two parents. Because that early stage is when you can get close to your child. You get to know some things about him or her. As I'm talking to you presently now, mm. I'm going to the daycare where my baby is to go and pick out. Okay. It's, uh, let's say, five minutes away from where the mother works. But I just decide on my own that whenever I'm less busy, I can go there, pick her up, and that's it. Hmm. So it shouldn't be the more uh, the woman should be should be the one to take care of the child. It shouldn't be the the woman alone. It should be both parties, depending on their schedule. Hmm. When you notice that, okay, maybe your husband is tired or he's not at home, or the wife is tired or she's not around, mm-hmm. you should be able to take care of your child. After all, you both brought that child to the world. So it's the responsibility of both parties to take care of that child, not the woman. You know, some men nowadays will say it is the woman's job to clean the house. Yes, it is their job. Because the Bible said they are ethnic. The man goes out to look for food on the table while the woman takes care of But we are in a world whereby things are changed. The man cannot do it alone. Neither will the woman can do it alone. So both parties need to come together and decide what they want to do for their family. And they grow up from there. I think that's my own opinion. Femi, thank you for calling to share your own opinion. 01465-7190. 01465-7190. Who should be responsible for child care? Rita in Festa. Oh, Hello. Hi, Hello. Rita. How are you? Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Richard. Welcome. Okay. Oh, thank you for bringing this uh, conversation online. Mm. I think uh, the mothers have been, you know, the ones, you know, catering for those children. But uh, as the world is growing, we are now we are going wiser every day. I think if both parents can bring those children here in the world, I think it's also their responsibility also cut up for them until they are fully grown to to a man or a woman. 
Because the mothers these days, if you see what mothers are going through on daily basis, all because uh, they say the woman uh, responsibility is to cure the child bringing, you know, to take care of them. I think both should. It's not only the mother alone. Both should take care of those children. But it's a pity that in our own belief, it seems the mother alone is, is, is the one responsible for all this. But I thank God, you know, through this uh, radio station and um, and all that, people are coming, you know, to realize that it's not only the woman alone. Right. Oh, I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you, Rita, for calling us. 99.3. Sorry about that. Call back. Hello? 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 Hello. Okay. 99.3. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks Hello. for calling. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Juliet. Welcome, Juliet. Thank you very much. Whose responsibility think, is it, do you think? I think it's both. Both. Hmm. Why? Yes. Why is it both? Why is it not the woman's responsibility? Well, because both of them brought the children together. So they are supposed to take care of the children. I'm a mother. Okay. I know what it takes. It's very difficult for only a mother to take care of their children. Okay. The the father the yeah, the children need their father's uh, help, assistance or mm. love. Mm. Like I said, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Both of them, she says. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name? My name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Hi. whose responsibility is it? It is naturally I wanna talk about the responsibility in the home. Mm. Where love is. The responsibility can be shared between both the husband and the wife. But that is not to say that the primary responsibility of the woman is not to take care of the home. Biblically, We're not talking about the, the home now. We're talking about children that you both had. Whose, yes, whose, whose yes. primary responsibility is that? Actually, I've been trying to call in for some other programs and I couldn't get in. Mm. We're talking about the caring for the child. Mm -hmm. Let me say that to care for a child, mm. a tender baby, mm. It's the responsibility of the woman to, that is how God designed it, to take care of the baby while the child is still tender. But while the child is grown, the man can as well take responsibility to help in the taking care. But we are to help woman. to help in taking care of your own child. You're helping. Yes, the man can take care of the child, but when the child is grown enough to be handled by a man, but the tender care that the child needs while she's very small. So, 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 so by tender, you mean when the child is small, you know, bathing the child, the baby. feeding the child, yeah. that one is for the women. Yeah. So people like my father that did it, do they have two heads? Did your father take care of the child from the day old? Yes, my father was the one who did our bathing, our feeding, because my mom couldn't do it. She was too afraid to drop us. That is in situations where the mother is incapable of doing it. No, my mother wasn't Actually, incapable. My woman. father just did it. Did he have two heads? It's not a matter of having two heads. What I mean is this. When the, the woman is not even disposed or is not unable to do it, but when... So, man, no, no, I'm arguing, your, I'm arguing your natural point. So now you're now amending it to when the woman is indisposed. So that means man can do it, but he just doesn't want to until the woman is indisposed. The man can do it, but what if the man is engaged in some activities and he is the breadwinner of the home? Mm. And while the woman is not working, do you advise that the man also wakes up Take care of the baby. What is wrong with it? Is it not his baby? Is it not his baby? Is it a, is it a, is it a stranger's baby? But don't you think that the the primary responsibility of the man is to care for the home in the area of pa provision? Pa part of, of caring for the home is caring for the children you, you put inside the woman's the stomach. Yes, we are not arguing that. He put it there. We actually are arguing that because you're saying because he has to go and make money, he can't wake up early to give his child a bath. So, so are you, Sandra, mm -hmm. are you saying that the man who is the breadwinner of the home, mm -hmm. while the wife is not working, should wake up and bath the baby and do the household chores? I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm not saying that, but I'm saying why can't the man do that? The man can do it, but I feel. Or oh, let me say, mm. the man can do it. It's not as if the man cannot do it. Mm -hmm. 
But there is something that you said mm. some time ago about the woman not being the primary. Uh, sorry, you are saying that it is not the primary responsibility of the woman to take care of the home. Consider what the Bible says in Titus chapter one, chapter two, verse five. Mm. He said to the district chief, keep us at home. Good, obedient to their own husbands. Keep us at home. That really means that God is expecting the woman to be a keeper of the home. Yes, but at no point did the Bible the say. Winner. But at no point did the Bible say, "Man, don't give your child a bath." Unfortunately, I need to take a break. I, I wish you could stay on the line for that break, but it's going to be a very long one. I do hope that you can call back because I was quite enjoying this conversation. Lagos, you're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. This is The Glass Ceiling. It happens every Wednesday. The Glass Ceiling takes a look at the obstacles in the way of women, stopping them from succeeding. I am Sandra Ezekwesili. Don't go away. This is an infomercial. An infomercial. Women are half the population, but don't hold half the political representation. Look at your Senate, your House of Reps, your House of Assembly, your Governor's Forum, even your local government council. You will not find a room half filled with women. It's time to translate our equal population into equal political power. And so, on March 7th, at the Glass Ceiling Convention, let's make a plan to get it. Brought to you by Nigeria Info 99.3. And the glass ceiling with Sandra as a questily. It's a full online conference to celebrate International Women's Day. We'll be talking about practical steps women can take towards political power in Nigeria. How to how to, how to elections, how to protect our votes. Our guest speaker is Imse Ufot, founder of the New Georgia Project that helped flip the U.S. Senate. Our panelists include Honorable Nena Okeke, former member of the House of Representatives, Rusola Abiola, APC grassroots organizer, Kate Henshaw, actress and women's rights advocate, Envy Kato, politician and executive director, Biridari Foundation, Damlola Odufuwa, co-founder, Feminist Coalition, official partners, Canadian High Commission, UK High Commission, US Consulate General, and Not Too Young to Run. To register, go to www.nigeriainfo.fm. You are listening to your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Sachets of Thai coffee for me. Why two? Because I'm using one to stop the white and using one to clear all the germs. But I can't see any germs here. <laughs> they are so tiny you can't see them. But they are there. And that is why I trust only Thai coffee to kill them all. Make your white fabrics whiter and your household free of illness causing germs and viruses with the disinfecting power of Hypo Hypo Bleach. From Altima, the studios that brought you Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Project Fame West Africa, comes the business reality show, Lion's Den, also known as Dragon's Den UK and Shark Tank USA. Aspiring entrepreneurs across Nigeria, here's your chance to pitch your business or idea to five Nigerian investors who are in search of businesses that are investment ready. Bring them on. Win them over with your pitch and they will invest in your business and partner with you to make your dreams come true. But the question is, have you got what it takes to survive? in the Lion's Den? To apply for Lion's Den, have an existing EcoBank account or open a new EcoBank account with a 10,000 naira deposit and visit www.ultima.ng slash Lion's Den to fill out an application form. Applications close on the 28th of February, 2021. Lion's Den is proudly sponsored by EcoBank and Chapel Hill Denim in association with Bank of Industry and Development Bank of Nigeria with the LIRS as strategic partners. Dentist, what are cavities and how does Colgate protect my teeth from cavities? Does it use Kung Fu? <laughs> no, dear. Most tooth pains are caused by tooth holes called cavities. When you brush daily with Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection, its expert formula blocks natural calcium in our teeth and helps protect them from cavities. It's time to upgrade to the world's most chosen toothpaste, Colgate, because Colgate locks calcium in. Out. Colgate is recommended by the Nigerian Dental Association. Hello. Good afternoon. How may I help you, please? Yes, I would like to buy data to watch plenty, plenty videos. You know now, music, sports, in short, everything on YouTube. What is your budget, sir? As low as possible. Well, how does 50 naira for an hour sound? 50 naira for one hour? Ha! Talk truth. Yes, it blows it 
you can is to see all your favorite YouTube videos for as low as eighty naira. Hey, what do I do? Simply dial star seven 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 hash to get started. Get the super affordable YouTube Prime base plan, start low and start feasting on your favorite YouTube videos for as low as fifty naira for one hour during the day and fifty naira for five hours at night. Dial star seven 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 hash. Select data. Select social bundle and select YouTube to choose the Glow YouTube plan that's just right for you. Glow. See the room now. Make I show you the toilet where you go to share with the other neighbors. Eh? Now the toilet be this. Uh -huh. What's your Oga agent? You mean say my general toilet clean come white like this, eh? Yes, now. See you waiting the use. Take cleaner. I'm sure the young Oyama jam come up. Hypo toilet cleaner. Wow. Wash your toilet at least once a week with Hypo Toilet Cleaner to keep it sparkling clean and gem free. Available in sachet for 35 naira only. Mm -hmm, madam, now two years land on one collector. We we'll go pay for six years. Hypo, hypo. Women are persistent. I mean, there are a lot of them out there. They're very persistent. No matter how you say it, I am married, though. Don't worry, I'm good. I don't want to do this. I'm fine. They are jazz. The one that will always be that come around and touch you. Oh, well. teaching children self-defense skills appears to be like a necessary thing for their day-to-day -day living. Because you never know. You go to the street network, man, you uh, give slap, 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 slap. You have to do it big, bullying you all around. Catch the dynamic duo of Collins Teke and Andrea Oduobi Teke every weekday, 10 to 12 noon, on your number one station for talk, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Hey, Michael, great life. Life is great, Frankie, but... It's really hectic, man. From when I leave for office in the morning to the long house at work, and then the traffic leaves me feeling tired and stressed. Guy, I can totally relate to that. I've found a solution. Revital. Revital combines the power of Panax Ginseng, 11 vitamins and 9 minerals, and is chemically proven to fight tiredness and stress. Revital. Physically active. Mentally aroused. A quality product from Rambaxi, a Sun Pharma company. Women are half the population, but don't hold half the political representation. Look at your parliament, your governor's forum, even your local government council. You will not find a room half filled with women. It's time to translate our equal population into equal political power. And so on March 7th, at the Glass Ceiling Convention, let's make a plan to get it. Brought to you by Nigeria Info 99.3 FM and the Glass Ceiling with Sandra Ezekwesili. This International Women's Day, let's talk about how to take over parties, how to win primaries, how to win elections, how to protect our votes. Our guest speaker is Inse Ufot, founder of the New Georgia Project that helped flip the U.S. Senate. Our panelists include Honorable Umena Okeje, Marisala Abiola, Kate Henshaw, Indi Kato, Damilola Odusua. To register to attend for free, go to www.nigeriainfo.fm. Wow! Yes, mommy! Go and bring two sachets of hypo food for me. Why two? Because I'm using one to stop the whites and using one to kill off all the germs. But I can't see any germs here. <laughs> they are so tiny, you can't see them. But they are there. And that is why I trust only Hypoglitch to kill them all. Make your white fabrics whiter and your household free of illness causing germs and viruses with the disinfecting power of Hypoglitch. From Ultima, the studios that brought you Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Project Fame West Africa, comes the business reality show, Lion's Den, also known as Dragon's Den UK and Shark Tank USA. Aspiring entrepreneurs across Nigeria, here's your chance to pitch your business or idea to five Nigerian investors who are in search of businesses that are investment ready. Bring them on. Win them over with your pitch and they will invest in your business and partner with you to make your dreams come true. But the question is, have you got what it takes to survive? in the Lion's Den? To apply for Lion's Den, have an existing EcoBank account or open a new EcoBank account with a 10,000 naira deposit and visit www.ultima.ng slash Lion's Den to fill out an application form. Applications close on the 28th of February, 2021. Lion's Den is proudly sponsored by EcoBank and Chapel Hill Denham in association with Bank of Industry and Development Bank of Nigeria with the LIRS as strategic partners.
I won't tell you the secret of best cow food, Navi. No chicken and classic CC powder. The ingredient that take make a man na natural by nature. Like real chicken, fresh mint, black and white peppers, garlic onion, parsley, mushroom, coriander. If you not no seasoning powder for inside your jollof, fried rice, egg goosey, and all other soup, eh? you go no say flavor, fast flavor. No seasoning powder, natural by ingredients, banga by flavor. Hey, Michael, great life. Life is great, Frankie, but uh, it's really hectic, man. From when I leave for office in the morning to the long hours at work, and then the traffic leaves me feeling tired and stressed. Guy, I can totally relate to that. I've found a solution, Revital. Revital combines the power of Panax Ginseng, 11 vitamins and 9 minerals, and is clinically proven to fight tiredness and stress. Revital, physically active, mentally aroused, a quality promise from Rambaxi, a Sun Pharma Company. Sachets of Hypo Fit for me. Why two? Because I'm using one to stop the white and using one to clear all the germs. But I can't see any germs here. <laughs> they are so tiny you can't see them. But they are there. And that is why I trust only Hypo Bleach to kill them all. Make your white fabrics whiter and your household free of illness causing germs and viruses with the disinfecting power of Hypo Bleach. Hypo Bleach. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. This, this is the glass ceiling. Glass ceiling. On hard facts. Hard facts. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili having a great conversation with you today on the glass ceiling. It's 4:35, and this is hard facts on 99.3. Nigeria Info, we are the nation's number one talk station. And today we're asking who should be responsible for child care? Who should be responsible? Who should be the primary caregiver? Should we stop seeing the wife, the mother as the primary caregiver? Should we start seeing the father and the mother as equally responsible for the upbringing of their children. Now, I was having a conversation with a caller before the break, and he was talking about, you mean when I'm working, I'm going out to go and bring things in the home. What of my wife, if she's a housewife? Uh, uh, I'm like, you know what? Let's bring it back to when both of you have to work. If a man can handle the child when the woman is indisposed, then that means that the man can do it at other times but refuses to. But let's stay in the scenario that I painted where both the husband and the wife are working outside. Because the, the caller before the break was saying when the children are tender, the, it's the primary responsibility of the wife. But when, is the, when the children are old, then it's now the father's turn to come and be a father. And I'm saying, if according to people who are, who are of the opinion of that caller who called in, that working outside is the man's job, how come it is okay for the women to share that responsibility of working outside and still come home and, like Maureen said last week, remove their suit and start taking care of the children? That's the question we're asking on the show today. The homework of the children, helping them with that, bathing them, clothing them, feeding them when they're tender, when they're grown, all that work that goes into the day-to-day -day of raising a child, should this be shared or is it the primary responsibility of one parent? Which parent is that? 0700 993 993 993 01465 seven one nine zero zero one four six five seven one nine zero we've got um engineer cory on the line engineer cory is in berger hello engineer cory thank you for calling us yes uh, afternoon. good afternoon welcome go ahead okay yes um i just want to okay 
Yes, please. Go um, ahead. You know, a lot of the ways we behave now, our, our lifestyle um, has a lot to do with history, mm. uh, where we are coming from. Mm-hmm. If you look at the, 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 the olden time, you would discover that the men are largely responsible for working outside. You know, they are the one uh, in the farms, mm. they are the one doing those things, mm. and then the wife only come out on a supportive role, like maybe she comes to the farm just to, you know, support the male, but majorly she doesn't come to the farm. She's just at home. And then even if you read only Bible, the Bible, you know, it's, it's an historical book. You will see that there it still talks about the, the woman being a homemaker that the less teach the young women to keep their homes. And, and so each time home is mentioned, it has something to do with the female. Uh, that is uh, a, um, uh, that that came from the lifestyle we had back then. Okay. But we in this modern times, uh, women don't want to stay at home anymore. They want to work. Uh, I, I think it's also okay to emphasize that it's not that women are forced to work outside the house. They want to work outside the house. They want to work outside the home. They want to hang a living like the men. They want to do everything the men are, is doing. Are you edu- you're, no. you're, you're an engineer, so you're educated. Yes. Imagine, yes. Would, would you go spend all of that time in school and not want to do anything with it? Uh, the first thing I think I need to say here is that uh, the essence of being in school is not so that you can work. Okay. Education is but, for but, but, enlightenment. Good self enlightenment. I'm part of self enlightenment. Yeah, enlightenment. So part of pa- part of part of self enlightenment okay. is also self actualization. Yes, sure. Isn't and I can it? choose to actualize myself in any other way. I am not tied, I'm not bound to having a job. Okay. I want to so so do you do you picture a life for yourself where you don't have a job, Engineer Corey? I didn't hear that. Do you picture, did you ever picture a life for yourself where you didn't want to have a job? Yeah, that's why I told you earlier that where we are coming no, from. No, you said, meal, hold I'm on, ready, you, 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 that you said I'm that women, that nobody is forcing women. Uh, you're saying nobody is forcing women to work. Women are choosing to work. And you said that in a way that connoted that uh, nobody is forcing you. You can stay at home if you want to. But uh, what, now that you want to work, well, you wanted to work. But you won't say that about Engineer Corey. You just say it as well. I went to school. I'm going to work. It's self-enlightenment and self actualization Yes, as I said earlier, men majorly want to work because the, 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 the major thing in the mind of every man is how he wants to make money available for himself and his family, first and foremost. We are working because I just don't want my wife to suffer, my, my kids, my family. I don't want to lack anything. That's my first thing I'm thinking about. That, that comes first before anything else. But you know, in a lot of situations, both men and women are forced to work because one person cannot bear the financial burden alone. The other day we did an episode, we did an episode the other day on the pressure on men like you to provide. And a lot of men like you called me to complain that the pressure was too much, that they prefer to have partners that did not put pressure on them for money, but instead contributed financially. So clearly, yes. those men prefer yes. a that wife who why. works. I was coming to that by saying that that was historical, and that these modern times that we are, you know, life has forced us to certain mold that uh, we have to work and pay bills. So, in the light of that, first and foremost, I would like to establish that if you love a man or a woman, I think your first role is to just make life as easy as it, it can be for them. Hmm. So if I'm married, so I'm married now, you know, I'm married, and I wouldn't want my wife to suffer when I can make it easier for her. And I can't understand why I would subject her to a situation where she's suffering, she's worn out, and I can do something to actually make life easier for her. I don't understand that. In my house, I try to even install things that just make everything easy. I mean, you don't need to suffer, just... Do everything you want to do in the home at the tip of your finger, activate this device, just do something. 
Yeah, but but he's taking care of. He's taking. Do you have children? I'm yet to have one, but, but then that's where I was just coming from. A father and a mother hmm. have the responsibility to raise their young ones. They have. I, I, I yes, of course. I, I mean, there's no way. argument about whether they have a responsibility. We're talking about who has the primary responsibility. Are they equally responsible or is the father or the mother more responsible for raising the child? Who is more responsible for raising the, the, the child? The point is that they can never be equally responsible. If quality they can't be equally is, responsible uh, for raising their child. Yes, a a father, a father a and mother who had the child cannot be equally cannot responsible. Be equally responsible for raising the for child, the child at, 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 at the same time. Okay. Our, at the earlier stage, there's a reason why a woman have mm. uh, the, the, the milk to feed the baby, and the man doesn't have. Yes, so but there, the but time, there's also the there's also SMA time. nowadays for women who cannot produce breast milk. So that's not really the argument you think it is, is it? SM what? There's also SMA gold for women who cannot breastfeed, for women whose breasts are not filled with milk. So that's not the oh, argument yes. you think it that, is, is it? That is an, an abnormal... It's, you would be surprised how many women cannot produce breast milk. Engineer Corey? Ah, oh, sorry, Engineer Corey. Call back if you can. Mrs. Judith is on the line. She's in Surulere. Hello, Mrs. Judith. Hello, good evening, Ma. Good evening. Thank you for calling. I love your program, first of all. Thank you. I was introduced to the program to my husband. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> and we tried calling last week. We tried, tried, and we could not get you. <laughs> well, I guess that's why you stayed on the line today. <laughs> yes, and he's here with me. Oh, great. I'm glad. To... And the baby is also there. Hi, baby. Yes, I can hear baby, too. <laughs> all right, tell me your okay. thoughts. So, on today's topic... It's an equal responsibility. Okay. Because when the child fails, the failure is going to go to the mother and to the father. For my own family, I've been married for six years now. Okay. And I have two boys. Okay. My first son, I started living him with his father at two months. Okay. Because I'm a beauty consultant. Okay. I'm a makeup artist and I'm a stylist. Okay. So the weekend is always jam-packed for me. Hmm. So I leave my children with my husband from two months. I express my milk down, and he does every other thing. If I, Miss Sandra, if I tell you that I've not swept my house since I got married, will you believe? I will believe. Why not? <laughs> my husband does the house choice. He does the sweeping because he's an extremist when it comes to cleaning. Hmm. I have tried my best. I could not satisfy him. And he took and he took it up. So the house choice, the responsibility of taking care of the children, it should be shared equally. Because when the glory starts coming in, it should be both parents that are going to take it. Even the man should do more. Why? Because he's the head of the family. He has more firmness when it comes to the woman. Do you understand? Hmm. So I don't understand why some men will call in and say, Oh, it's the woman that's supposed to do the tenderness, the woman that's supposed to... They will keep this woman at the end of it. You are having a good program and hold on for my husband. He's the itchy. <laughs> Hi, baby. Sorry, baby. Stop crying. Okay, Hello. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon to you. What's your name? My name is Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Thanks for calling. Thank you very much. The problem we have in our society is purely upbringing. Okay. I was born into a family of eight boys, wow. and I grew up. I grew up to do everything myself. Mm. Upbringing is our biggest challenge in, in 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 what we are saying today. Okay. So I do everything, and I'm proud to say it that the only thing I cannot do as a man is to get pregnant <laughs> and breastfeed a baby. <laughs> every other thing, every other thing, proudly, I do it in my house, mm. and I say. It I say it in my office, I say it in the church, I say it anywhere I go to. If you like, take it. If you like, leave it. If you like, get angry. 
for that is reality. All right. Thank you, Ralph. My kids, my kids, my kids, I raise them. I, I, I stay with my kids. I do everything with my kids. If my wife leaves me with the children mm. from morning till evening, mm. I don't call her and ask her for anything. Mm. I manage the crisis. If there's any crisis, I manage them myself. Mm. Purely because of upbringing. Mm. The biggest challenge we have is purely upbringing. And that is why I will plead with you to please discuss parenting. Okay. Parenting. Okay. Parenting. Parenting. Because if you ask me, I will tell you that parenting in our modern day world has failed. Hmm. Okay. I brought in two boys. I brought in two boys mm -hmm. to my house. Mm -hmm. And as they stepped into my house, they met me cleaning my sitting room. Mm -hmm. And the first thing the boy of eight asked me mm. is, Uncle Raf, are you sweepy? I said, yes. No, he said, no. He said Uncle Raf, what are you doing? Mm. I said, I am sweeping. I am cleaning my room. He said, why? Mm. I said, why are you asking me why? He said, because you are the man now. You are not supposed to be sweeping. You are supposed to be cleaning the house. An eight-year-old boy. Eight-year-old. eight-year-old boy. Oh my God. Told me that two weeks ago. <laughs> that Uncle Ralph, what are you doing? I said, I am sweeping. I am cleaning my room. He said, why are you doing it? Mm. You are the head of the house now. You are the man now. I looked at this young boy, this small boy. Now imagine at eight, imagine the kind of wife that young man will marry. Hmm. Imagine the children that will grow up under the apple string of that young man. So if you ask me, parenting, parenting has failed. And not until we correct parenting our society. Forget it. Forget it. Ralph and Judith, thank you very much for calling. I loved talking to both of you and the baby because the baby had things to say on the show as well. The baby told you his mind or her, oh, well, they had two boys, so his mind. Baby told you things there. Huh? Uh -huh. All right, it's 10 minutes to the top of the hour. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Sure Boy says... Sandra must be a perfect woman with a perfect husband and a perfect father. Every small thing I do, my daddy this, my husband that. Who told you what happens in your home is better than others? Sure, boy. I'm not saying what happens in my home is better than others. I'm just telling you what happens in my home. If you pay you now your pocket. I'm not, I didn't tell you that it's better than what's happening in your houses. I'm just telling you that when you make the argument, I'm a man and men are supposed to. I give you examples of other men. My husband, my father, Ralph, who just called into the show, and other men who have called into the show as well, who are not saying the things that some other men are calling and saying. So is it really about what is natural, or is it simply about wickedness? <laughs> For lack of a better word. <laughs> All right, we've got a comment here. Um, who says, Sandra, that your caller that says uh, um, that uh, women don't have to work. Why is he saying it like that as if women have a choice in the matter? Um, the world has changed. It is harder to make it with one income. So women are forced to work as well. Let's not make it look like it's optional. And now that both women and men must work, unlike before... Shouldn't both of them take care of their kids unlike before? It's not about you doing your wife a favor. It's about you taking care of your own child. My people, wahala <laughs> deo. Seriously, wahala hmm. deo. All right, let's go to WhatsApp. Take a look at more messages on WhatsApp. Mm, somebody says, Sandra, a woman whose breast milk is not running is abnormal. Is SMA gold the same thing as breast milk? Go, Jerry. You're a very ignorant person, um, Vibe Laboratory. And it's not your fault that the world is very ignorant about um, the way women's bodies work. And so we make women feel like they're doing something wrong when something is wrong with them, you know. So their they're, they're breasts um, pumping milk or their ovulation is out of whack or their menstruation is weird because women don't have these conversations. And so you think that you're the only one it's happening to or that you're abnormal. You're not abnormal. It's absolutely normal for some new mothers to not have their breasts produce milk. You know, and so that's where things like formula come in handy. And you have some men who stay up to feed the baby. Even with the breast milk that their wife pumped, 
Because with the, you, you mustn't feed direct from the breast. Sometimes the, the breasts are hurt and you have to do it with a bottle. Some husbands wake up in the night and do it. Do they have two heads? Do they not see the children as their children? Let me take another message from WhatsApp. We have to take another break. I know, I know, I know, I hate it too. Mm? Let's see more messages from WhatsApp. Uh, this one is, um... okay, this message is not loading. All right, come on, come on, come on. Sandra, I really enjoy your program. You're doing well. Well, thank you very much for enjoying the pro program. Sandra, this is purely a case of social construct. A child belongs to both parents, so it's the responsibility of both parents to raise their children. If we want a better societal construct in this regard, today's parent must raise their children in a different way, not in this segregative manner we see all over our society. If not, 100 years from now, we'll still be having this conversation. I hope not. Let's take that break, Lagos. Come back and talk about our papa. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Don't go away. More conversation, more talk, more from right Ultima, the studios that brought... 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.